In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the distance between ourselves and another object and get it to move um, towards us if we get close to it. There's quite a few moving parts to this, so it's not for the faint of heart, but let's have a look at it. So right now we've got a player object and an enemy object, and if we look at our room, they are apart from one another. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the player object when it's created, because it should always be kicking around, when it's created, it's going to set this variable. Let me just get my variable here. I think it's here. I'm going to set the variable called global dist, global dot dist, I beg your pardon. I'm going to set it to zero so that we've defined this variable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stepper. This will happen 30 times a second. So 30 times a second, I'm going to create a little bit of code here. And I'm going to execute this code. Now, I'm going to say that global, global dot dist equals, and this is where I did a little bit of research, distance to object. So distance underscore to underscore object brackets the name of the object. So I want to know how far away the enemy underscore player, no, enemy underscore object is. And this is a really good reason why you should have sensible names for all your things, and then I'm going to put a semicolon on the end for the end of that. So, first of all, let's see if this runs without error, because that's our first thing. We're going to be calculating this before we can use it. Okay, so far so good. My game plays. I think it's probably working, although I can't really tell. So, what I'm going to do is set up something on the enemy object that works with that distance. So, now, this is assuming that it works. Actually, you know what? I'm going to build this in. I'm going to build another object, and I might take this out later in the game. But right now, I'm going to make a projector object. Um, project, projector, underscore object. And I'm going to use this so that I can actually have visibility of this variable. So it's going to be drawing, and it is going to draw. Let's see, where are we down here? There we go. It's going to draw the variable called global dot dist. And it's going to draw it at 30 and 30. Okay. So 30 and 30, it's going to draw that variable. Okay. And actually, I reckon that might just work as it is. Let's have a look and see if that works. So I run. So I'm actually not seeing anything there. And the reason why I'm not seeing anything there is that I actually forgot to put that projector into my room. So projector cannot do its job if it's not in the room. Okay, fantastic. So you'll see I'm actually getting that number there that's telling me what my distance is. Now, one of the things that I'm curious about here is if I have two of these enemy objects, which of them is it actually checking? So I'm going to take that one out and I'm going to put them on either side and see if I can work out which one of these I'm actually getting the variable, the um, calculation on, because it's calculating to this object, but there's two objects with that name. So let's have a look. Okay, so I'm moving closer to this one. Yep, so that, that calculated to there, and that calculated, I think it's calculating the smallest distance. Now I seem to be getting further away, which leads me to believe that I've probably lost control of my object. So, uh, I think it is calculating the distance to the nearest one of those objects. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to give the enemy object something to do. Again, 30 times a second, so once a step, it is going to make a decision. And it's going to make a decision based on that variable. So where are we here? Uh, up there. I'm going to test the variable called global dist. And if it is less than 200, so 200 and smaller than, then I'm going to get it to do this action here. And in this particular case, I'm going to get it to move towards, now there is code that does this, I'm just um, looking to remember, you can get it to move towards something, maybe it's on the first uh, thing where it moves towards, there it is, so my photo's in the way, it moves uh, oh, towards a particular spot. Okay, that's not what I wanted. 
So what I want, I think, is this one here. Oh, no, step avoiding. No, okay. So it's going to move towards the player. Actually, you know what? For now, I'm just going to have it moving to a particular spot so that we know whether it's recognised us. So there we go. Um, so when I get close enough, when that score goes under 200, that object should move. You can, of course, get it to move towards you. That would be a perfectly fine thing. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to get close enough to it. And there we go. And it moved. Okay, well, that works. They moved to their coordinates. Although their coordinates were a little bit different to each other, which surprises me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say to them, else. So if it's not smaller, then I want you to do this other thing. And the thing that I want it to do is just stop. So I'm just going to give it this command here, and it's going to stop moving. And up here, I'm actually going to get it to move towards the player. So I'm going to say player underscore object dot x. So it's moving towards the player's x coordinate. It's moving towards the player's y coordinate. But I'm going to make it go slower than me so that I can outrun it. So what I think will happen here is that when I get close to it, it will start chasing me. But when I'm outside that 200, the else condition will kick in and it will stop moving. But I have no idea whether this will work. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to get close to it. And now I'm going to move away. Oh, there you go. And then when I get close again, and then when I move away. There you go. Works really well. I hope that's useful to you. And that's the end of this tutorial.